Hi, this is Amr Abdigawad, and we're going to discuss in this lecture osgood schlatter disease. What are the objectives of this lecture? First, we'd like to speak about the pathology of osgood schlatter and then we're going to speak about the radiographic finding, and then finally, we're going to mention the treatment of osgood schlatter A good source that you can use is this book, Pediatric Orthopedic, a handbook for primary care physician by myself and Dr. Naga. So before we go into the definition of osgood schlatter disease, let me show you this picture. Uh, this picture is anatomy of the knee in skeletally immature patients. So we see this is uh, the proximal tibial uh, growth plate or proximal tibial physis. This is the distal femur uh, growth plate. So the proximal tibial physis uh, will separate the metaphysis and the aphysis from the epiphysis here. This part of the epiphysis, we call it the tibial tubercle or tibial apophysis. Uh, why we call it apophysis and not epiphysis? For two reasons. First, it's not part of the knee joint so if you see here is the knee joint this part is not a uh, part of the knee joint and also because it's subjected to uh, traction stress because uh, it has the attachment of the patellar tendon so this part we call the tibial tubercle or tibial apophysis uh, so what is the osgood schlatter disease? It's inflammation of the insertion of the patellar tendon in the tibial tubercle or the tibial apophysis. Uh, that's what was sometimes is called tibial tubercle apophysitis. So osgood schlatter is inflammation of that area of the tibia, this part, uh, which we call the tibial tubercle or tibial apophysis. Uh, that's why it's tibial apophysitis. So what is the instance of osgood schlatter? It's more common in boys than girls, and it's more common in children that's active in sports that require require repeated knee movement like uh, soccer um, uh, uh, and football. So what is the clinical presentation for osgood schlatter disease? Uh, it's very simple. The patient will be complaining of anterior knee pain and swelling, and this pain will be related to physical activity. So if you see this child, you can see here that he has a swelling uh, of the upper part of the tibia, whereas the tibial tubercle or the tibial apophysis here, you also can see here from the front, this is the anterior part of uh, uh, the lower knee or the anterior part of the upper tibia. It has a swelling here. You can see it from the side here. So uh, this area will be tender when you press on this so the patient will be having anterior knee pain increase with uh, um, activity uh, when you examine him you will find the swelling in the lower part of the knee or the upper part of the tibia and when you press on the tibial tubercle the patient will complain of tenderness and pain so this is a 15 year old uh, boy playing soccer presenting with knee pain uh, when you examine him you have uh, there will be a painful swelling here uh, in the upper tibia exactly over the tibial tubercle and uh, uh, when you press here you will find tenderness uh, over the tibial tubercle so this is a picture of, uh, of osgood schlatter disease so what about imaging for osgood schlatter disease uh, the x-ray that you're looking for will be the lateral x-ray of the knee uh, as you see in this picture uh, so what you will see is enlargement of the tibial tubercle also you may see fragmentation of the tibial tubercle as we're going to see or you can see some uh, bone um, here in the, uh, the or some ossification in the patellar uh, tendon uh, all these are uh, x-ray pictures uh, of oswald schlatter disease so another x-ray for a patient with osgood schlatter disease. This patient is a little bit younger. You can see the growth plates are open here and here. And uh, this is the area that we discussed. This is the tibial tubercle or uh, tibial apophysis. Um, as we said, it's apophysis because not, it's not part of the knee joint. And uh, because we have uh, the patellar uh, tendon here attached to it. So the patellar tendon attached to this area. And you can see in this x-ray, uh, there is enlargement and there is separation of the tibial apophysis from the metaphysis here uh, if you can see here this area is definitely larger than the normal growth plate uh, this separation is indicative of osgood schlatter disease sometimes also you can see fragmentation of the tibial apophysis here all these are finding uh, in, in osgood schlatter disease x-rays so what is the treatment for osgood schlatter disease the most important thing is decreased activity so this is the first thing that you have to do uh, you have to decrease the activity of the child so you may have to tell the child to skip practicing for a few months till he improve also non-steroidal will help improve the symptoms and decrease the inflammation if these two measures do not uh, result in improvement of the pain um, send the child for physical therapy for stretching of the hamstring because one of the theories for osgood schlatter disease that the child has tight hamstring so the quadriceps 
biceps muscle through the patellar uh, tendon is pulling too hard and that results in inflammation of the tibial tubercle. Uh, so physical therapy for stitching of the hamstring um, and also braces uh, like knee immobilizer to decrease the range of motion of the knee. So treatment of Osgood-Schlatter, uh, first thing is decrease activity. Also try non-steroidal if these do, uh, th uh, two measures do not result in improvement. Uh, physical therapy for stretching of the hamstring and knee immobilizer to decrease the range of motion of the knee. Orthopedic referral is uh, rarely needed. Most of these children will improve by themselves, especially when you reach skeletal maturity. If the pain persists, orthopedic referral can be done. Uh, however, as we said, surgery is very rarely needed uh, because most of these kids improve when they reach skeletal maturity. Uh, this is an article that I published about treatment of osgood schlatter disease in adult by surgery in case their pain persists. But as we said, this is rarely needed. Thank you. All my videos are for educational purpose only. Please consult your doctor before any decision.